I am begging you, NVIDIA. I'm serious. Do not do this crap. I don't care if AMD isn't releasing a competitor. This kind of pricing is absurd. But before I get to that story, AMD is being extremely deceptive, Intel promises 3D vCache in a terrible way, and just bad news all around for NVIDIA's next gen. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, AMD is doing some extremely deceptive marketing right now. And just like when I call it out on Intel, I'm going to call out AMD as well. So starting things off, AMD released this blog post and in it is this slide right here, which as you can see claims that AMD's Ryzen AI9 HX370 is on average 75% faster at gaming than Intel's Core Ultra 7 258V, which is obviously a bold claim. I mean, that's a big deal. Well, the issue is that AMD has frame generation turned on here, yet AMD just calls it full gaming experience with tech versus full gaming experience with tech. Now, some people have tried to argue that FPS is FPS, and I can somewhat understand that, but don't forget that frame generation causes additional latency, as well as artifacting, all of that. So it's not comparable to a fully rendered frame. Now, they do have this slide, which does mention FSR3 or HyperRX, as well as this slide, which mentions FSR and or AFMF2. Now, here, right off the bat, you'll quickly notice the massive problem with this one in that here, Intel is more or less taking the lead. But here's the thing, this still doesn't give the whole story, because as you can see right down here, all of these either come with AMD's Fluid Motion Frames 2, which is their driver level frame generation when you have AMD's HyperRX turned on, as well as frame generation when Super Resolution 3 is turned on. So this is extremely deceptive, especially because people like AMD's, you can see here, Senior Director of Consumer Marketing is only sharing this slide. And then he also says also on average 75% faster than the competition. Ultimately, my point is really just to say two things. First, shame on you AMD. And second, to my viewers, always be on the lookout for shady marketing. And to make sure you aren't easily fooled in the future, build your problem solving skills with today's sponsor. Brilliant, my go-to place for computer science, data analysis, programming, I mean, they've got it all. Wanna learn how AI works? Their course on large language models can show you exactly how LLMs are made. Wanna learn backend programming with Python? Brilliant can guide you through it all. Wish you could fully understand GPS and how it all works? They'll help you visualize it. And it's that visualize part that's key, because Brilliant was built from the ground up to teach you by doing. See, they use interactive puzzles that aren't just fun and engaging, but also a way to help you learn through experience, which means no more boring lectures or memorization. So learn how I do by visiting brilliant.org slash gamermeld to start your free trial. And when you use my link, you'll get 20% off your annual premium. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Next up for today, AMD's successful launch of the Ryzen 9800X3D is proof that 3D vCache is a monster in gaming. And with that, you would think Intel would start doing the same. Well, during an interview with Intel's tech communication manager by Durbauer and Ben's Hardware, he says this, quote, the AMD CPUs are tailored for a very specific target group, and that group is gamers. We are aware that this technology can offer a lot to gamers, but it also comes with trade-offs and certain disadvantages or compromises that one has to accept. In this case, it's fine if I have an X3D CPU, which might not be as strong in applications, that is intentional and technologically, we still have it under control. That means next year there will be a CPU that features a cache tile, but not for desktops. He then goes on to talk about the server market, which likely means that yes, they are set to release a tile with this type of 3D vCache or something along those lines, but it's likely gonna be for Xeon CPUs. Basically, if anyone was hoping that 
AMD's massive success with their 9800X3D would, if you are a fan of Intel, make it down to their chips, at least when it comes to next year, that definitely doesn't seem to be the case. Not only that, but I do have to say that what he's talking about as far as compromises, now we haven't seen the higher core count chips, so this may be the case for those, but at least for the 9800X3D, it's actually fairly close and can beat the 9700X at multi-threaded workloads. And next up, before I get to the really bad stuff, in a new press release from Corsair, the company actually said this, Quote, the latest graphics cards now require a 12V 2x6 GPU power connector, a standard we expect will continue with next-gen GPUs. Next-generation high-end graphics cards could demand even more power than current models, which can draw up to 450 watts. Basically, what they're saying, unfortunately, is that, well, for one, the 12V 2x6 GPU power connector likely isn't going anywhere. Then he also effectively confirms it's clear that he's talking about NVIDIA's GPUs because they effectively confirm that these next-gen GPUs are clearly coming soon. I mean, they're already talking about it. Now, they do say that next-gen high-end graphics cards could demand even more power than current. They say could, but from everything we've seen, it definitely looks to be the case. Not only that, but you can see it says, while the company doesn't explicitly say so, there's a slight hint that the 50 might draw more power than the current generation. And in fact, Corsair is apparently urging users to upgrade their existing PSUs to accommodate this potential uptick in power requirements. Ultimately, this tells me that NVIDIA hasn't allowed them to explicitly state that it's going to be more than 450 watts, but obviously this company is wanting to make money. So, I mean, you can't exactly take what they're saying as absolutely true, but I highly doubt that they would say this, just flat say this like this, if it wasn't going to be taking more than 450 watts. Don't forget, as they state right here, leaked information so far claims that the 5090 is said to consume almost 600 watts of power. Not consume it, but have a TDP of 600 watts, which is obviously 150 watts more than the RTX 4090s. But of course, I actually went over that a little while back, so if you love staying up to date, being one of the first to know all the latest PC hardware news, make sure you subscribe to GamerMelt. And lastly for today, we have the absolute terrible, horrible, just absurd news to say the least. If you remember, not too long ago, there was a video from Moore's Law is Dead, and in it, he claimed that one of his sources is actually saying the RTX 5090 32 gigabytes could cost a whopping $2,000 to 2,500 bucks. But then, shortly after that, we heard from resident leaker copite 7 kimmy who claimed that this is totally fake so that was obviously really good news basically claiming okay it's not actually going to be that bad you can see he says i don't believe there will be a significant price increase for the rtx 5090. well unfortunately it looks like it may have actually been right as you can see right here, this is a well-known linker from the Chipel forums, and he claims that it is, in fact, 2000 to 2500 bucks. Now, some people are seeming to think that this originally comes from Moore's Law is Dead, which was obviously then claimed not true by Copite 7 Kimmy, but that doesn't seem to be the case because... Well, for one, it's been quite a while since that leak originally happened. So, I mean, why wouldn't he have done it right around then? But also, people are asking him things about, say, the 5080. And yet, in that same leak, you can actually see a pricing for the 5080 is mentioned. But here he said, well, I'll, I'll ask you later. Maybe he meant to say I'll let you know later. But he'll ask probably his source later. Either way, he says, I haven't heard any news today, meaning this is likely coming from a second source. And to that, like I said the first time, the reason why I really want to talk about this is just to say, obviously, this is a range of price. Now, I really hope NVIDIA is willing to go even lower than the lowest price. I mean, $2,000 is still absolutely absurd but the reason why i bring this up is just to say that people have got to start speaking out and speaking out now to let nvidia know we are not going to pay that it's absolutely absurd you need to share this video comment down below 
let them know because they really may be watching this and maybe if there's enough people who react negatively to this they'll rethink this pricing altogether and maybe even go lower i mean i get it Competition is key for keeping prices down, and we've pretty much already heard from AMD themselves that they aren't going to be competing at the absolute high end. And obviously, that's very important for keeping prices down, hence why this really could be a reality, but I don't even care about that. NVIDIA needs to know it doesn't matter if they have competition. This is simply too expensive. So while that does it for today, let me know what you think about this absurd pricing for NVIDIA's RTX 5090 down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day.